I'm talking to my daughter about all this new work I'm doing on the employee engagement area, and she said, Daddy, everything in employee engagement is involved asking people passive questions. What's a passive question? Do you have meaningful work? Do you have a best friend at work? Do you have clear goals? Kelly's research is real clear. She said, you know what? You ask people a passive question, you will invariably get an environmental answer. Do you have clear goals? No, why not? My boss is weird. Do you have meaningful work? No, they make me do stupid things. Where's the fault? Them. Kelly's taught me something I'm going to teach you called active questions. Every question starts with a little thing that says, did I do my best too? Because you know what? That's the one thing that's kind of hard to blame on everybody else. Did I do my best too? Now, I'm going to share six active questions, and then I'm going to share our research on this and invite you to all be part of the study. Any of you that want to can be part of this research. Six questions every day. Question number one, did I do my best to be happy? It doesn't even say you were happy. You know what it says? Did I do my best to try to be happy? Number two, did I do my best to find meaning? Rather than waiting for the rest of the world to provide meaning for me, did I do my best to find meaning for myself? Did I do my best to be fully engaged? And by the way, let me give you a challenge. Have every one of your employees start answering this every day. This way, employee engagement is not this business of what about them? It's what about me? Did I do my best to build positive relationships, to set clear goals, and did I do my best to make progress? Who is the one person we cannot blame for the answer to those questions? That's the one question we're 100% responsible for. Now, here's our research. If any of you want to participate, you get an email every two weeks with six questions, and then we've done before and after research. What have we learned? So far, 44 studies, 2,037 participants. 31% of the people said two weeks later, I feel better at everything, happier, more meaningful. 62% said I got better at at least four of the six items. 88% said I got better at something, and almost nobody got worse at anything. Why? You teach people to focus not on what I cannot change. You get me to focus on one thing, what I can change. And that's all I can do anyway. Now I'm going to finish with my favorite coaching exercise in the world. You're now going to get the best advice you're going to get in this or any other coaching lifetime. Are you ready? Yes. Take a deep breath and go like this. <sighs> now I want you to imagine that you're 95 years old and you're just getting ready to die. And you're on that deathbed. Here comes your last breath. But right before you take that breath, you're given a beautiful gift the ability to go back in time and talk to the person in this room, the ability to help this person be a better leader, a better professional, a better coach, much more important, the ability to help this person have a better life. What advice would that wise 95-year-old you who knows what was really important in life and what wasn't and what matters and what didn't, what advice would that old person have for the you that's sitting in this room? You don't have to say anything or do anything. Just answer that question in your mind. What question, what advice would that old person have for you? Whatever you're thinking now, do that. In terms of a performance appraisal, that's the only one that's going to matter. That old person says you did the right thing, you did the right thing. That old person says you made a mistake, you made a mistake. You don't have to impress anybody else. Some friends of mine interviewed old folks who were dying, got to ask this question, what advice would you have? On the personal side, three themes. Theme number one, be happy now. Not next week, not next month, not next year. Be happy now. Great comment from old people. I got so busy chasing what I didn't have, I couldn't see what I did have. I had everything. Many of you are among the luckiest people that ever lived. You have friends and family and interesting work. Compared to me, most of you have youth. You got it all. Don't get so wrapped up chasing what you don't have, you can't see it. I've asked thousands of parents around the world to answer this question. I say, fill in the blank with one word. When I want my child to grow up, I want my child to be. What's the number one word from parents? No matter what country, it's always the same. You want your kids to be happy, you want your parents to be happy, you want the people who love you to be happy, you go first. You be happy. Number two, friends and family. I know you're committed to your companies. When you're 95 years old and you look around your deathbed, none of your coworkers are waving goodbye. You realize these people matter. Learning point three, if you got a dream, go for it. And that's a good thing for the people in this room. Most of you are doing that. Because if you don't go for it when you're 45, you're not going to when you're 85. Final advice, business advice, it's much different. Number one, have fun, life is short. Number two, do whatever you can do to help people. The main reason to help people has nothing to do with money or status or getting ahead. The main reason to help people is much deeper. 95-year-old you is going to be proud of you because you did, disappointed if you don't. 
And if you don't believe this is true, you interview the CEO of any major corporation who's just retired and ask them what matters. I've interviewed many of them. What are you proud of? None of them told me how big their office was. All they ever talked about is the people they helped. Final advice also is say, go for it. Your industry is changing, your world is changing. You do what you think is right. You might not win, but at least you tried. Old people, we almost never regret the risks we took and failed. We always regret the risk we did not take. The final thing I would like to say is, I have the highest respect for the work you all are doing. Like you have had a guaranteed base salary of zero now for about 37 years, so I kind of know what it's like. I hope uh, you found our little talk today practical and useful, that you have just a little bit better life. Thank you.